In this quick video, I'm going to explain to you a couple things. One, how you can test continuity between your amplifier or source unit to your speaker. And also to discuss the importance of speaker phasing and how to test the phase of the speaker. Now, for this demonstration, of course, I'm going to show you in two parts. The first part being continuity. Now, of course, you could do this with a multimeter, which I've shown in other videos. So for anybody who uses their meter... Um, or watch any of my other previous videos utilizing that multimeter. Of course, you can see how to do it. It's very simple. Set it to continuity. Measure the two leads coming off the end of the speaker. And if it buzzes out, you got your continuity. Pretty straightforward. Doesn't really need uh, a video just for that topic. But on speaker phasing, that's another story. So let's just say if you have a speaker, whether it be like this one here, which is uh, one of my old favorites, a Memphis brand speaker, um, or a home theater, wherever your speaker may be, or... A subwoofer. Now, the bigger the speaker, the more bass response that your speaker is going to provide, the more of the importance of phasing. Not to say that it's not important on smaller speakers such as this five and a quarter. But if you take a, a, a standard battery from my video, I'm going to do it the El Cheapo way, like I typically do. Nine volt battery. For myself, whenever I do this, and I do this everywhere I go for every job I ever do or have, have done or ever will do. I always test my speaker phasing, whether I know the wiring is done correctly or not. On a lot of speakers, it's very hard to discern which one is the positive. Um, I mean, in my field, it's pretty common that the stripe would be the positive. But then again, in some, some systems, it's the complete opposite. So how do you really know? So if you take a, a battery, which of course is going to be labeled, the small is always the positive, and that funny wide one is always going to be a negative terminal on a 9-volt battery trick is connect your speaker to that battery hold down one of the two terminals and the other one you're just going to depress momentarily notice how the speaker reacts so I know for a fact that my stripe wire is the positive lead on that speaker and on the battery I'm depressing this to the positive so I know everything here is correctly in phase. When the speaker is moving upward in an excursion, the phasing is correct. If you were to have it out of phase, it would do the complete opposite. It would go down. That's not the way a speaker voice coil is designed to operate. So what, what happens here is that if you had one speaker alone in a model scenario, which would probably never happen anymore these days, you probably wouldn't notice it. It might have almost like a ghost-like type of tone to it. It would have very little balls. It would have very little bass. But when you have multiple speakers, say a pair, say if this was a subwoofer, if you had one 12 inch woofer that was in correct phase and you had another one directly right next to it, which was out of phase, the one that's out of phase would actually reduce the bass response by the, by the left speaker by half. So that's pretty significant, of course. That goes without saying. And not even that, by the, by the actual physical action that the speakers are, are causing by having opposing speaker cone excursions, but you're also having opposite sound waves in the same shared airspace, which is even worse. So when you compound the out of phase problem, plus the this, this standing wave problem, which you're going to incur by having multiple speakers out of phase, then you really have a crappy system. So the bottom line is that if you had two subwoofers that were out of phase, one 10 inch correctly phase would blow both of those things away. So whenever you're doing this kind of thing, always verify it. Uh, make sure that things are right. Don't just assume things are done right. Um, I personally recommend not utilizing a 9-volt battery, but again, every, I know everybody has one of these in their, in their junk drawer someplace. Um, I typically will use one of my power drills, which has, you know, around 14 volts, and that's going to uh, supply a little bit more because the speaker this size doesn't really need a whole lot of power um, for DC to move. But however, if it was a more bigger, manly type of speaker, you would need more voltage to pull to push and pull that sucker around. So um, keep that in mind. So that's my take on the speaker phasing.